important than our connection to our soul. Do you know how much money you're losing by staying in a job that you don't like? Even if it pays $10,000 an hour, your body is telling you, I want something. This is a really interesting thing because we have two voices. You can feel the first and the second voice. This first voice shows up and it goes, it goes, I should leave this company. You feel that voice, like, we should, we, should, we should create this company. We should write that book. That first voice that feels good, we should ask that person out. We should leave this situation. You know that feeling that shows up? That feeling can't tell you why because you've never done it, right? But that feeling is a preview. It's saying when you go do it, it'll always feel this good. It's a feeling. It's an instant feeling. What if we ask that person out? What if we write the book? What if we go to that cabin for two months and just write? You know those feelings? This is what is the difference between the people that are in their head and the people that are in their heart. That feeling, if you listen to that feeling, you will suddenly move with the feeling and you will expand. This is a real thing. So when you have that first feeling, it feels really good, but it can't tell you why because you've never done it. So immediately, it's scary because it's unknown. So you go to your mind and your mind comes up with a collection of reasons why you shouldn't that are so stupid, <laughs> right? You'll be like, we should leave this company. Yeah, but if we don't, we can't go to the Cheesecake Factory party next Thursday. <laughs> and the first voice can't tell you this because it doesn't want you to have proof. It wants you to have faith. But the first voice like, if you'd learn to listen to me, you could own all the Cheesecake Factories in a month and you could make them all vegan if you wanted. <laughs> and the second voice is like, I'd love to, but they have those Thai lettuce wraps and I know that I get free Thai lettuce wraps next week at the business company. So... You are actually feeling all day this feeling guiding you, but we've taught ourselves over and over and over again to ignore it. So we're used to actually listening to the why we shouldn't voice. And then we live this lie, and we actually are in an argument with ourselves all day. But because most people in this world are in that same argument, it's just the norm to be in that. In fact, you start to feel weird if you listen to what you want to do and do the thing you want to do. Every time I take a leap forward, everything in my career, in my life, my everything in my life starts to change, and everyone around me just thinks I'm nuts, that I'm not in chaos, because I'm listening to what the guidance says, and then I grow. It's a crazy feeling, but we have a world that's designed to make you not want to listen to that thing, because there's a lot of money to be made in you not knowing how unlimited you are for other people. Do you understand that? For real, the news has to scare you all day. It's brilliant. They scare you all day and then run Prozac commercials. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> they find the worst story and pick it and tell it to you over and over and over again. Do you know how not scared of flying we would be if they told us about the 30,000 flights a day that made it? <laughs> Did you know that 30,000 flights a day land? That to me is newsworthy, that a plane took off and it landed? That's amazing. They should interrupt, every time a plane lands, they should interrupt whatever <laughs> show you're watching and interview every single person as they're getting off the plane. <laughs> Sir, how was it? It was fantastic. I had a nice time. You'd be like, I think I want to try flying. They're like, coming up, a family that totally lived through the night. You'd be like, oh, this sounds great. But they don't. They scare you. They're just like telling you the worst things, Prozac commercial, more of the worst things. And then at the end, they act like they were a friend the entire time because they tell you the story of a cat that got stuck in a well. <laughs> Every single news story ends with a cat that got stuck in a well. I think the news is putting cats in wells. <laughs> so they can scare you for 58 minutes and then finally be like, talk about nine lives. <laughs> <laughs> And then they go to the scene, and there's some woman with a greasy cat. We thought he was a goner, but it turns out he wasn't. And they come back, and they're like, and the cat's name was Lucky. <laughs> sure was, Bill. And then they're stacking papers. The news is always stacking papers, but I don't know why, because they have a teleprompter. But for some reason, they also have a side job with Kinko's. And then they run these commercials with these pills that list all the side effects in the commercials. Aren't these weird? You'll see these people in these commercials rock climbing and sailboarding, and you're going, man, I wish I had cold sores. <laughs> like, you get to do so much fun stuff when you have cold sores. And then I got cold sores, and it's nothing like that at all now. <laughs> it just burns now, which is kind of summary, I guess, if that's what they mean. <laughs> but that's the ridiculousness of this world. They run commercials that now tell you at the second half of the commercial that the first part was a lie. 
They're just telling you. We're becoming so brainwashed that they look you in the eye and tell you that the beginning of the commercial was not true in those commercials. Or like a car commercial on the radio. Have you ever heard a car commercial on the radio? It'll be like, come on out and get a Ford. There's no catch. Joe's trucks, there's no catch. No catchiest trucks around. No catch. Must be 18 to buy. All vehicles subject to prior sale. All vehicles subject to tax and license. Price not include tax and license or the price of the car. Commercial rebate available. First payment due 120 days from delivery. Please no flash photography. Mileage may vary. No purchase necessary. My other car is a Porsche. Store in a cool dry place when Cooper and Rouse would rather be golfing. Do -do 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 -do. Cookies! Amen. I'm like, what kind of car was it? I don't even know <laughs> what kind of car it was. Because we live in a world that's designed to keep you from this thing. Because I'm starting to listen to this thing. And once you start to listen to this thing, that first voice that says, do the thing, that's, you know, and we hear this stuff and we go, I know I should do the thing. And then you don't do the thing. And it's just so weird. Or we hear the content and it feels good, but we don't live it. That's like going into the gym and having someone explain to you how a treadmill works and going, cool, and leaving and not getting on the treadmill. <laughs> It's a really weird thing, but if you actually listen to the thing, I'd like to tell you a story. I guess this is what's coming up. See, like everything that just came through, I didn't know I was going to say. But as I keep going, as I show up and I start and I don't know what I'm going to say, more and more, it proves to me, as I stay in love with not knowing, it proves to me that everything's going to be fine. So the first rule I have, or thing, or not rule, I don't have any rules. I'm God. You're God, too. I hope you like me. <laughs> you should, because I'm you. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, they told me I have to end around 10, but time's not real, so we're going till 2 p.m. today. Um, so, time's not real, so. <laughs> so, and how great were the, um, it, it's Jeremy, right? Jeremy. I wasn't done, I was going to say minus Jeremy plus Jamie. I always speak in fractions. So, but I've worked with you many times, and you're such an amazing musician. But you're me, so did you guys like my song? Because <laughs> we're all one, so he's me. Um, it's awesome, man. But. Ego is so weird. You know, ego just, it's such a funny thing because that's when you just care what people think of you, but we've learned to only listen to that. And that's the only thing that matters. And it's the weirdest thing because it's the opposite of the only thing that matters. But it shows up all the time. Like, do you ever have it when you're walking in one direction and then you realize you're going the wrong way? And then you have to turn around, but you can't just turn around because you know other people are watching you. You have to do other stuff for some reason. You gotta be like, oh, and then turn around. <laughs> You know, because you'd look weird if you were just like, Mrr. especially if you said, Mrr. I like to act like it's on purpose. I'll just be like, I screwed up, and then I keep going. Wrong way, and I love it. <laughs> Have you ever had it when you talk to someone for a while, and then you say goodbye to them, and then you both leave in the same direction? Now it's all screwed up because you've said goodbye, and you don't get if you're allowed to talk anymore. You're like, dude, shut up. We had a deal. Why are we on the moon? So I want to tell you this story because it, it excites me. It gets me, it, it, it's something, that's how I move. I go, what, what feels good? That's the only thing I use. What feels good? Most people consider everything. Don't consider things. What feels good? Because everything, you, if you move from what feels good, all the stuff you're supposed to consider will be in that. There's so many things that you don't know, but that feeling is actually your GPS system. What feels good right now? You don't know why. Trust it, though. What is going on inside me is like, go and tell the story. Okay, but now I told you this, and so apparently you wanted me to tell you that, too. So that just came through because I listened to it, and now that lesson came through. But here's the thing. I'm learning this stuff as I tell it to you. That's the weirdest thing. Have you ever given someone advice, and then you learned from it? Have you ever had that happen? You'll give them the most incredible advice. You'll be like, good point, me. I better start doing that. <laughs> Who's the you that gave advice? Sometimes you'll give them advice that wasn't even what they asked, right? They'll be like, I have a stomach ache. And you're like, I think you should break up with her. <laughs> and they're like, I'm single. So if, you, <laughs> if you've given advice before and then you learned from it, who's the you that gave the advice? Because the advice that came through you'd never heard before. That's how you were so surprised and learned from it. So whenever I hear that I'm supposed to say something, I know that there's two of me. That's actually real. Because half the stuff I'm saying right now, I've never heard myself say. So as I say it to you, it's actually more like 30%. Some of the stuff I've said. I said the news thing before. But I want to be, see, I also can't lie. I'm really bad at lying. Like if I'm with you and I have a muffin, I'll be like, I had a scone. And then an hour later, I'll call you sweating. Like it was a muffin. I'm sorry. Because... <laughs> 
because I know that when I say the truth, it just empties everything out. It just clears everything out. And when I'm scared of the truth, I'm saying that that lie is bigger than me. That fear is bigger than me. That thing that I'm blocking is bigger than me. We think everything's bigger than us, and we say that we're big, and we don't. Like, how about this? Like, we make signs outside of us bigger than ourselves. Like, we go, I think that's a sign. But we don't listen to the feeling inside. That's also a sign. I had a woman once come up to me, and she said, I want to divorce my husband, but I'm looking for a sign. I said, the fact you want to divorce him is the sign. (laughs) Don't wait till you drive by Divorce Your Husband Avenue. Like... We like to make everything bigger than us. Even a positive thing we like to make bigger than what we are. Like an idea. Have you ever had a good idea and you're like, you guys, I could do this. Yeah, but the idea came from you. You could print these things all day. Get excited about you because this thing came from you. That'd be like an apple tree making an apple and being like, dude, everybody, look at this. Now it's not making new apples because it's showing off the one apple it made. You're an endless supply of ideas. Get excited about you, not the ideas. Fear is a thing that you make bigger than you, right? Fear is when you have your own thought. When you create a thought out of thin air, and then you totally forget you created it and get scared of it. It'll be like, what if they don't like me? You created that. That was your creation. That's like drawing a picture of a monster and forgetting you drew it, and then putting it on the wall and just freaking out every night. Like, Like, you drew it. You drew the thing. So all these things that we're scared of, they're just our resistance to our thought. That's it. It's not even the thought. If you comprehend, that's why I loved this, I loved this church, the spiritual center, because the first thing we do, we do gratitude, we're, we're, we're giving, we're in meditation. Meditation for me is so huge. I'm doing two hours a day. I'm on day 43 of two hours of meditation every morning. And I make a video each day. You can see it on my website where every day I make a video of the revelation that I had that day. And it is changing every aspect of my life. It's changing my career. It's changing my, it's everything we think, well, I don't have time for that. No, you don't have time to not. Because every day I sit and all these thoughts show up. And the thoughts are just like a roommate. They're just like, what if they don't like you? You know, you could screw it up, whatever. And I realize the one thing these thoughts want is love. That's it. Because the only problem with our thoughts is our resistance to the thought, not the thought. So if you have a thought come up and it goes, you could totally screw up when you speak at the church today, go, awesome. (laughs) You're free, right? What if they don't like me? Cool. It's not the thought, it's your resistance to thought. It's the fact that when the thought's trying to come out, because what that is, is that's the past you trying to leave. And it can only leave through your acceptance of it. But when the thought shows up and you go, oh, what if they don't? Now you're keeping it there. So everything that I resist, if I don't like the speaker, I keep pointing it out to you, that'll be eventually the only thing we're staring at. Because every time you have a thought, if you resist the thought, that's what keeps the thought there. So every thought that's coming up for you, just love it, because the thought isn't you. It's just a thing floating by, and you're just the space that the thoughts are trying to leave in. Well, when I'm meditating two hours a day, all that's showing up is freedom. All that's showing up is just love, and I start to realize I'm just the space that these thoughts are coming out of. This past me is trying to leave. The story of me who wanted mom's love is trying to leave through me. And all I got to be is a big enough space of love so that it can leave. It's the most amazing thing. And then I have so much more time each day because, first of all, the stuff that shows up after that are insights. Because the more I do this, I realize I'm just this moment. And when I realize I'm just this moment, I accept bigger possibilities. Because if you think who you are is your past, let's say, you're, to give you a measurable example, you're someone who sees yourself as worth 40000 a year. That's who I am to most people, right? Well, if someone offered you a million dollars, that's death to who you are. So you're going to sabotage it. This is why a lot of lottery winners go bankrupt, right? If you say who I am is overweight, well, then weight loss would be death to who you are. People like to defend their victim stories. You know, I'm someone who went through this in my past. And you go, no, you're just this moment. They get mad because they've created an identity with that. But if you get that you're just this moment, you can accept any possibility. Because if I realize I'm just this moment, and I realize that anyone else is just this moment, I'm not better or worse than anybody. Obama isn't bigger than me, or a homeless person, I'm not bigger than, we're all equal. If you're just this moment, you're infinite possibility. But we're under the illusion that we're our past, and so that, that's why I don't get into necessarily motivation, because people say sometimes, oh, is he a motivational speaker? I believe we're so much more infinite 
than needing motivation. Motivation is when you're going, I'm going to make this thing happen. That's because you think you'll be happy when you get the thing. A big lie we live in, I promise as someone who's had an amazing career for myself, a big lie we live in is when something happens, I'll be happy. Right? Every one of us knows this feeling. When something happens, I'll be happy. What happens when you get the thing? How many examples do you have in your past that you thought, when something happens, I'll be happy, and then you got the thing? Right? But what were you thinking? This thing will make me happy. Well, now it's your source of happiness, and you have it. So you're totally codependent on it. It's your happiness. It better not leave. This thing is my happiness. So you grab on too tight. You sabotage it. You're overfixing because you don't think you're worthy of the thing because it's your source of happiness. So you have 10,000 examples in your past of when something happens, I'll be happy. And then you were just like, what's next? Or how do I keep this thing? Or don't leave me because you're my source of happiness. So what I want to tell you, after getting to achieve many of the things that I really believed would make me happy, after having two number one Comedy Central specials and getting to date a lot of amazing people and having an amazing income and everything, it's not when something happens, I'll be happy. This is why you lose a lot of celebrities, because they get the thing they thought, when something happens, I'll be happy. I promise you, it's when I'm happy, things will happen. But you won't care when they happen, because when they come into your life, it's just normal. It's not this weird, bigger-than-me thing. It's not, I just made a million dollars or got the love of my life or whatever. You are the love of your life, and now that person can completely align with you because you've created a space of alignment through your connection to yourself that makes it amazing for that person to show up in your life. It makes it normal. It makes it normal for that career, everything. So for me, I've discovered that in connecting to myself two hours a day every day, first, making that priority, I first of all am changing my inner alignment and I'm not taking on nearly as many things that I would have taken. Because there's are things that I was fixing because I thought I wasn't worthy of them before. So I'm over fixing and not doing things I wanted to do. But when I connect to myself for two hours a day first, I suddenly have so much more time because I'm not taking on things that don't, I don't feel worthy of. And then what happens as I'm in this moment is instead of trying to come up with the right idea, insights show up. Things that go, just make that video. Do that thing. Let go of that thing that feels heavy. That thing in your life that feels heavy, let go of it. There's a thing that just all the time that feels, I mean, obviously if it's your kids, hold on to them. But like <laughs> the things that you can let go of, yeah, let go of them too. Let go of all of them. We don't need them. So, no, kids hold on to greatly because they're still in their alignment, right? They're the ones that know that who they are is what they love, not what loves them. Kids will just do whatever they want. That's why another thing I, I really believe that I, I, one of my purposes in the transformation field is to invite a lot of playness and being and having fun. Because in the comedy world, comedy is making fun of life. So many of my peers in the comedy world were very cynical. But a lot of times the, I, I notice they're also not cynical about their own doubts. So they get cynical and they just a lot of times get mad about stuff. So I didn't feel like I had a home there because I also know that I'm infinite. And then you go into the transformation world and there's a few amazing people and then there's a lot of people like, hmm, hmm. And they're like, does everyone have their weird necklaces? And, and you're like, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and they have these six, seven day retreats and they'll be like, today we're going to start the process of getting happy. And I'll make a joke and they're like, please. We're trying to be happy. And you're like, <laughs> so I realized that there's this world of people that don't believe anything's possible and take themselves too seriously. And there's also a possibility that I'd like to invite to everybody here that you can believe that everything's possible and you don't have to take yourself seriously at all. It's just totally the norm. It's just normal, right? Because isn't it weird when we act like it's a huge deal about something? Like when you manifest something, you're like, I can't believe it. I thought of the person. Then I, sometimes we act like something was a coincidence or synchronistic. When it, I was hungry. I said I was hungry. And four days later, I drove by a McDonald's. I couldn't believe there was a McDonald's. <laughs> the universe heard it. Like, <laughs> but, but there is a playfulness. And when we say, I can't believe I manifested this, what are we saying? I don't really believe this. This is so crazy that I can do this, that I have these powers. So universe hears you. Okay, it's rare. You got it. It's not in life, you know? And we have to keep reminding ourselves that we have this thing. This should be the norm. As I meditate, I realize this is the norm, you know? 
And, and it's good to remind ourselves and be in this stuff, but when you start to live it, it becomes normal. Like, I don't have to convince you that I have an arm. I know I have an arm, but you can imagine how bad I'd be at throwing a baseball if I had to talk myself all day into the possibility that I had an arm, right? That's the same as the universe. I think that I'm connected to the universe. I think that I'm, you are the universe. You know, all the time people go, I gotta love myself more. No, you are love. Stop doing it more. I gotta get in the moment more. That's future. That's a future sentence. People say, I gotta get in the moment more often. That's a future sentence. You're in the future. You just blocked the moment by saying that. You're making everything later, and everything will be elusive. It's what you are. And so your mind goes, how do I do that? By killing the how. By letting go of the part of you that says how. Because how is you are going to do it. The story of you, the past you. Love the part of you that's asking how. So when you go, now what? Love that. Love that voice that's that impatient. Right? Because there's a part of you that goes, okay, so I want to manifest all this stuff. Now that I heard this talk, what do I do? Love that voice, because guess who's saying, what do I do? Because I'll be really good to my parents. Your childhood you that wants to do it right so that you'll get love, which only exists if you don't understand that what you are is love. You are love. I promise you, through a lot of true inner investigation, you actually are love. Because the comic in me is about the truth, too. And my you know, BS meters through the roof, and I'm totally about wanting to find what's true. And through a lot of research, I'm like, oh, there's no way that I could be this temporary story because when I meditate, a belief shows up, and then it leaves, and I still exist. So there's no way that I'm my beliefs, right? Every, you've believed so many different things throughout your life, and you still existed through every one of them. So there's no way that who you are is your beliefs or your body. You've had a different body over and over and over again. So there's no way who you are as your body. You had a five-year-old's body. You've had different weights. But you've existed through all of them. So you're like this pole, right, that's just standing here. And all these beliefs and people in your life and careers and all these things are like flies coming on and off the pole. But you think if you don't know that you're the pole, you think you're the fly. So when it's trying to leave, you hold on to it. You're like, no, don't leave. It's supposed to leave if it's leaving. Everything that's a part of you is going to be still attached to you. I don't need to keep my arm on all day. It's here, right? It's a part of me. So these things that are trying to leave, let them go. The more you let them go, the more some of them will come back to you, by the way. And you can live in a totally different paradigm because most people try to hold on to things because they don't get that they're infinite love. They think that thing is my source of happiness. But I promise you... I promise you, if you actually choose to do this work, you'll comprehend that you can let go of every single thing that's heavy in your life, and you'll make room for the space for what you want to be. So I'm going to give you an example of this. This was the story I was going to tell you 15 minutes ago, <laughs> and then I went off on a tangent. And when I say tangent, I don't mean the math kind. I was so bad in math that when the question said, show all your work on a separate piece of paper, I would draw a picture of myself looking at the dude next to me's paper. So... <laughs> So here's my example of how I learned. When you let go of something, the only reason you're scared to let go of something you don't want is because your mind can only measure what you will lose. It can never measure what you will gain. So if you're going through a breakup and you're sad, that's because you're focused on the loss of one person versus the gain of seven billion, if you're bisexual and willing to date everybody. <laughs> so... <laughs> So if you're scared to leave a job, but you want to leave it, I'm not saying everyone go quit your job today, but if you are dying to leave it, if there's a calling in you that's bigger and you're scared, that's because you aren't actually moving from faith. You're moving from what you can measure you will lose, but you can't see the infinite, ridiculous opportunities that will access, and you can't see what you're, when you're holding on to how much of you you can't access when you're holding on to something that you don't want because you're in fight or flight. You're holding on to something out of massive fear, and your body works that fight or flight needs to be the first thing we take care of. So this was designed, this holding on to something you don't want was designed originally like if a tiger jumped out at you, and you could be in fight or flight and deal with it and then access your soul. This isn't supposed to be something we move from all day, every day, right? So at one point four years ago, I wanted to see what would happen if I ate just for, now none of me is preaching this type of food for anyone. Everyone has their own thing. But I just wanted to know what happened if I went 90 days eating all raw vegan. 
Okay, I just said, what would happen if I ate, how weird, the stuff that actually was designed for us to eat, the stuff on the trees. And all my friends were like, you're crazy eating, actually not drinking Coke and, <laughs> and eat, not eating pizza. You're, you're eating stuff just regular? That's crazy. So I just decided to eat like really healthy. And what happened was I didn't eat anything cooked. I announced to my following that if I ate one thing cooked, I'd give away $10,000. So that was my get on the island and burn the boats, right? So now a cookie, when, you know, you go on your diet, and then three days later, a cookie, one, one cookie won't hurt. And then your mind's like, well, the next day, my new thing is one cookie won't hurt me, so I'll do that again. And then, well, if I can have one, I can have two. And the next thing, you're going through sleeves of Oreos on your third day of your diet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, I was like, I want to make sure I don't slip at all. So I said, if I eat one cooked thing, I'll give away $10,000. Now, that might sound extreme, but it got extreme results because this is what happened. I said, okay, so the first month, I just, the first week was really hard because I also had this old mental story that I get a lot of love through this food. Like there were restaurants that I passed with my mom, you know, when I was a child that I would, that she would give me this stuff and I'd fe I believed that I got love through that type of food, right? So, but after a few weeks, what actually started happening was someone walked by me with a hot dog and all I smelled was metal and chemicals. That was all I smelled. I could, like I lost the appetite and I realized right there my breakthrough was I've changed my taste buds by not ruining this habit and like continuing staying there. My taste buds have changed. So I started going, when I think of cooked food now and I think of you know burgers and pizza and stuff, it actually feels separate from me. I've changed my alignment with this thing. And I thought, what else feels heavy? So I just said, well, Facebook does. When I go on Facebook, I just do this all day, and I just feel sad all day for some reason and waste my day. So I said, okay, I'm going to add to this just for fun. I want to see what happens. No, no Facebook. And then I said, for a while, no dating. Don't worry. So I said, <laughs> it was just a while. So I said, no dating. So now I'm not, not on Facebook. And all of a sudden, all I had was time. Instead of thinking of it as motivation, think of yourself as a helium balloon that's always trying to go up, but the string's caught on something stupid, like something CNN said or what someone thinks about you or whatever, and your job is to keep cutting these strings, right? So when I got about a month in, I let go of these things, and what I started discovering was I could feel from a new view of all the things that felt heavy to me, and something at the height of my top Comedy Central career, something in me said, you're bigger than doing comedy clubs on the road. Don't go headline comedy clubs on the road anymore. Like, there's something in me calling me to do something more fulfilling than performing in Missouri. I'm almost off, don't worry, I know it's 10. <laughs> I was kidding about the 2 p.m. thing. Um, <laughs> so this calling was in me, and it said, I don't know what the next step is. I don't know what the for sure next thing is to do, but somehow stop doing the comedy clubs, and we'll make room to figure it out. So I looked into a camera, we were doing a documentary at the time, and I said into the camera, I'm done doing comedy clubs on the road. And right when I said that, three auditions for movies showed up into my phone that second. We have this on tape. But that wasn't even the weird thing, the, or the crazy thing was, the next week, now that I didn't have the comedy clubs anymore, I had time to be excited and also see myself as by declaring that, proving to myself that I'm even bigger than that. And now being in this alignment that there's something even bigger for me. So I said, okay, well, I love doing comedy, and I love speaking about transformation. What if I combine them? And my ego went, nobody's ever done that. And my soul went, nobody's ever done that. You could, there's a huge market for that. There's companies that would love for you to make their teams laugh, and colleges, you could speak on the lecture circuit. You could be speaking at these. And there's, li not that this matters, but there's literally no competition, right? There's nothing. I don't even know where you'd file me at the bookstore, like, just... Transformonity? I don't know what you call this. So I said, okay, I want to do it. And then I said, I'm just going to make a video for the advisors of the colleges by name. So I performed at colleges as a comic, but I made 500 videos that week, one for every advisor of every college. And I said, hi, my name's Kyle Cease. This is a message for Diane Johnson at North Idaho University. I, you've seen me do stand-up, I'd love to, and I made 500 videos, and all week my friends are like, dude, you're crazy, you could be headlining a comedy club right now for, you know, 3,500 bucks, you could be sitting next to a Walmart somewhere, and you could just be performing at night and killing it at night, and you could be doing that, and I'm just, what they could see is I'm not making any money because I'm just doing this, but the following week, a hundred of the colleges called me back and said yes at 10,000 a pop, right, and I, oh, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. 
And I don't say the money part, but it blows my mind how much we, even though people hear this and they go, it's not about money, fine, but then honor that with you on how much you use money as the excuse to not do the things you want to do, right? People go, it's not about money, and then they don't listen to their soul, and they stay in situations that they don't like. So how can you say it's not about money when you're doing that too, right, to those people? So when I said, and I made these videos, all of a sudden, a million dollars came in because I was doing what I love. I got to fly out, say exactly what I believed, and then make the audience laugh, and then a bunch of kids come up to me after shows, like I, got, I just realized how infinite I am and all this stuff. And then I'd go home, and then I had an agency that I really thought that I needed, that the agency would take 10% of every college, but they had nothing to do with it, right? So these college gigs would come in, and I would immediately feel, oh, I have to give 1,000 to this agency, I have to give 1,000 to this agency. But they aren't doing anything. And my mind could justify it. When you start justifying it, it's time to let go of it, right? My mind goes, yeah, but they get you movie roles and they get you these things. They get me auditions. Yeah, but if I'm justifying, I'm in my head and not my heart trying to explain myself out of listening to my heart. So I said, I'm getting a check that I got on my own. This college or this agency is taking 10%. They now feel heavy. Does that make sense? So I said, I called them and I said, I have to let go of you guys. And they were like, what do you mean? Like, no one's ever dropped us before. This is a huge agency. And I was like, I know it doesn't make any sense. It's a spiritual thing for me. I just got to go through my thing. I'm letting go of you guys. Now, here's the weird thing. A week later, I was invited to perform with Jim Carrey and Eckhart Tolle at a convention called Gate. The entire audience was producers and directors. <laughs> and I was in such an alignment because right when I dropped the agency, I felt in such an alignment with my soul that when I went out on stage, I didn't know what I was going to say. I see in the fourth row, Jim Carrey and Eckhart Tolle are sitting next to each other. And I said to them, I said, this is really weird because I'm told all the time that I'm what would happen if Jim Carrey and Eckhart Tolle had a baby. And, <laughs> and, they, and they laughed like that. And then I said, I, I don't know if you guys are picturing that. Uh, I, Eckhart, I know you're not because it's a thought. And I know you don't have those. And then I said, some of you guys might think that's crazy what I just said or offensive to Eckhart, but it's in the past, so Eckhart doesn't even know about it. <laughs> and had this performance right after I dropped the agency that was so in the zone. And when I walked back, I hung out with Jim Carrey and Eckhart Tolle and then was offered five movies. And the crazy thing was, the three years that I had the agency, that I didn't feel in alignment with, that sent me out for all kinds of auditions for movies, I couldn't book one. Because I spent every moment in those auditions trying to please them. And I wasn't bringing me into it. So I was doing everything, holding on to them for three years, trying to make this the truth versus me the truth. And the second I let go of them and got in my zone, I booked all the movies, which was ironically the reason that I was holding on to them in the first place to get them. The thing that you think you need to get to where you want to go often is in the way of you getting there. Like, boy, I, I'll only feel love when I get this person. No, you feel love first, right? Feel love first. You'll make that person in the way of you getting the feeling of feeling love, right? I'll get the movie when I get the agent. The agent's in the way of the movie because now you're codependent on the agent. I'll get the everything, I'll get the money when I have the right career. No, you do what you want to do, and money will show up at angles you can't believe. And you'll feel so in your alignment, you won't want to spend it on addictive stuff. You'll want to donate it. I'll tell you this last thing. I like to do this with the money. I like to circulate it like crazy because I like to prove to myself that I'm the apple tree, not the apples. And when you sit there and you hoard it, imagine if you did that with food. Imagine if you thought the way eating worked is you're supposed to get as much food as possible in your mouth and never go to the bathroom. And if you did go to the bathroom, you had a coupon to make sure very minimal happened. <laughs> that would be insane, wouldn't it? Well, the same people are full of the money. And if you do this, you prove to yourself that you are infinite, that you have infinite content, that you're just this moment, that you have an unlimited amount of things to say, that you're just love. And the world will go, that awareness that you have is the highest asset that I've ever seen in my life. It's a bigger asset than money, and that awareness can even make money, so it's for sure a bigger thing. And as you listen to your heart, you won't believe how many avenues will take care of you in every single area. 
So that's all I have to say is that just realize that you are infinite love and actually, prom I promise you, I've never listened to that voice and had it not been wrong. Everyone that's been in a relationship for way too long or in a job that's way too long, you know how it works. The universe will keep kicking your butt until you finally listen to it. So that's all I'm here to say is that you are what you love, not what loves you. Fall in love with not knowing. It's not when something happens, I'll be happy. It's when I'm happy, things will happen. And um, I'll be in the back saying hi. And thanks for letting me go a little bit over. I love you. Thank you very much, you guys. You're infinite. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry if I'm a little long. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. I often say, I don't know why I chose this song, but I know why I chose this song. I trust it now. I am here for God, here for God, here for God, oh, here for God, here for God, and God is here. I am here for God, here for God, here for God, oh, here for God, here for God, and God is here for me. Today I enter in this infinite accord to be a place where the Spirit of the Lord won't go unnoticed as I sing this song and breathe with every moment I taste, touch, see, hear, and feel I am here for God, here for God here for God, oh, here for God here for God, and God is here for me. I am here for God, here for God, here for God, oh, here for God, here for God, and God is here for me. How can I serve thee? Let me know what I can do that I might be a place for light and rest for you and deep compassion for myself and those who need your loving kindness like a jasmine summer breeze I am here for God here for God here for God, oh, here for God, here for God, and God is here for me. I am here for God, here for God, here for God, oh, here for God, here for God, and God is here.
case full of gold I'll rearrange that Alchemize my past in vain Distilling moments Until I witness all life gained I am here for God Here for God Here for God Oh, here for God here for God and God is here for me. I am here for God, here for God, here for God, oh, here for God, here for God and God is here for me. I am here for God and God is here for me. I am here for God, and God is here for me. That is Jamie Lula. I truly want to encourage you to go and pick up his music, his CDs, any of them that he have. I know firsthand, and I've known this all along, in my personal journey of healing, you know, when you can't do anything else, I just would sit with my earphones on. And as Michael says, Michael Beckwith says, singing is like, is like praying twice. It's exactly what, it, what it's like. You can hear the spiritual truth over and over and over, and it totally transforms you. And you to sit there. So thank you. I encourage you to, to, to add those spiritual songs into your life and, and play them all day long and always because they just, it just feels good. It just connects you in the right spot. So now's the time for our, our offering. You know, I never really thought about it. You gave me a whole new vision about our offering here at Seaside. It's kind of like a divine laxative. You know, we, we don't, want, don't want you to have constipation. We don't want it stuck. We don't want it coming in, not going out, you know. And so that's, that's a whole new way to look at this from, the, from our, our church going. So let's call the ushers forward and to just relieve these people of all this stuff going on from them. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you? <laughs> and we do know that God is good and that God is infinite and God is forever circulating. And we know that this offering and actually the release of any of the money that we have as we, we put that into the circulation, that it only goes forward and blesses others. We know that it comes from a blessing itself because it, it touched our hands because somebody was willing to release it for our good. And so we become those divine circulators as we allow the presence and the love of God in the form of energy to go forward. I always feel really good about giving to those areas that I want to see expanded in the world. And there's nothing greater in my heart than to see people know peace, know God, know well-being, and know they're good, and to be that pure expression. So know that that which you are giving to the Seaside Center is just that. It's going forth to expand people to, and this individuals and this planet to be a better place. So thank you all for serving. Thank you for all that you give. And so let's just turn within as we just place this next to our hearts and just say, thank you, Mother, Father, God. As we accept with great gratitude the blessings that this infinite source has given us this one time. But more importantly, as we release it, let us just feel really good for we know that it goes for and blesses others. And so it's with that that I just give thanks for this time, for this offering, and I allow it to be. So let us together say our affirmation together. Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now. So it is. <laughs>
Thank you. So we just bless this offering as it comes forth here to multiply and to go forth and bless the lives of so many people. It's with great gratitude that I open my heart, my mind, and my soul to the good that is going forward here. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Rick. Appreciate it. And thank you to our band, our wonderful band. We have Bob and Max and Tom and Pat. <laughs> Rebecca, thank you so much. Thank you to uh, Jamie Lula, who is back at this table. Thank you to Kyle Cease, who is also back at this table. I want to remind you that today he has a workshop after second service. I encourage you to come to it. It's only $20. Also, afterwards, there's um, uh, Cafe on Lake, which is lunch being served. And there's tamales that are being served today. And you also can buy some tamales to take home with you. So um, go see Sharon back there for that. Thank you, guys, in the booth. We have Matthew. We have Marv. We have Tim on video. So thank you so much. And thank you for all of you for being here. We appreciate it. I think our kids have something they want to share with us. What do you got, kids? Thanks. Those are beautiful. If we simply lived in gratitude, that's all we'd need. So good lesson, Reverend Laurie. Good lesson. Thank you. All righty. So now is our time where I just want to invite us to go into prayer as we anchor all of this in and into our hearts and then into our lives as we go out into our world. So I just invite you to turn within. As we close our eyes to this outside world and we recognize that there is only one power, not two powers, not a good and bad power. There is one power and one presence, and that power and presence is good. It is in through and as all things. It guides and leads us. It allows us to not be taken from the path. It is that loving presence that is just for us. Knowing there can be no separation, for God is and I am. I claim it right now for myself and for each of us. I let go and I let God as I trust and I allow that inner guidance that is within us to guide us and lead us to all that is good for us and all that is our highest good. For today's, a, today's a powerful day in that trust and that knowingness as we remember, simply remember the truth of who and what we really are. Remember that we never walk alone, that we can let go and let God, that we can trust that inner guidance that inner wisdom, that inner voice. We can allow it to lead us through this life. And so it's with that that I know for each of us that every step that we take as we leave here is a step that is filled with joy and peace and love and well-being, wholeness and health, abundance and flow and good. It's with that that I give great thanks for this truth and this knowingness as I release this into that eternal yes excited as I watch that yes manifest itself right before my very eyes. And so I allow it to be, for I know it is done. So be it now. Amen. Amen. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself. I didn't know grace of God was sufficient. I didn't know the love of God was at hand. But now I can say, if you are discouraged, struggling just to make it through another day, you've got to let it go. What you have to say
evolving for my highest and best. So let's say that together. I am always evolving for my highest and best. One more time. I am always evolving for my highest and best. And the grace song. <laughs> I'm living in peace, I'm living my life for what I believe, through joys and through fears, in this world I walk, God's grace shines on me, and it shines on us all, we are living in grace, we are living Thank you. 